Okay, we are live, but we must let it breathe, baby. Bring on Facebook. And then we'll get to what's been going on today at Broncos HQ. Welcome in, everybody. It is the Mile High Huddle Podcast, and I'm your host, Chad Jensen. With me, my fellow football priest, you know him, you love him. He is Zach Kelberman. Zach, just when Bronco fans were daring to hope that all of the bad injury juju was washed away when the Broncos jettisoned the strength coach, Lauren Landau. And then we learned today, wide receiver K.J. Hamler, after missing most of last season, suffered a pectoral injury, and he's going to be out how long? Tell people what's going on. Unfortunately, four to six months is the prognosis. Uh, He recently underwent surgery to correct that. It's a partially torn pec, but it's still a a major injury. And, um, you know, to what you were saying, even if Lauren Landau was still here, I couldn't put this on him. This is a KJ Hamler problem. Dating back to college, he had the hamstring. Then he had a hamstring his rookie year. Then he dislocated his hip and tore his ACL on the hospital ball from Teddy Bridgewater. And then now he can't even get through an offseason workout on his own, by the way, away from the team facility without suffering an injury. I've been a big KJ fan. I, I love how much he overcame mentally and physically last year with the passing of his grandma. But you got to be able to play and contribute, and uh, it's looking like a lost cause for him. Unfortunately, it's a bummer. And the Denver Broncos, I mean, going into contract year, because, yeah, he was a second-round pick. So am I getting this math right? He was 2020 with with Judy, right? So contract year, what incentive now do the Denver Broncos really have to keep him around? Scott could maybe pull up the, the cap hit or slash savings if they were to move on from KJ Hamler. Uh, and that would suck because as you said, he's, he's an easy guy to root for and his personality uh, is just fun, but got to have a guy who can play. Got to have a guy who can be on the field, I guess is a better way to say it. Cause KJ can play, but you gotta, you gotta, can't make the club from the tub. Yep. So I guess what Montrell Washington, please stay a uh, step up. Jalen Virgil, also yep. a bit of a speedster. So it's not as if the Broncos, if things don't work out with KJ or if they pull the plug, because they have been known, the Broncos, to pull the plug on players who injured themselves in the offseason, <clears throat> Juwan James, then at least they won't be completely bereft, Zach, of, of a speedster, and then we'll grab Sam Bam. No, nah, but like Jalen Virgil and Montreal, they can't do what a healthy KJ Hamler could do theoretically. And we even saw that, Chad. I mean, in the uh, preseason game against the Vikings, he caught that 80-yard bomb from Drew Locke. I mean, he is a game-breaker. Unfortunately, he can't stay healthy. Um, two things. I think we'll know fairly soon what the Broncos plan to do with KJ because they should address that in the draft. They have to shore up that receiver group because they've been hit by injuries hard. Since 2020, from Cortland Sutton to Tim Patrick, Jerry Judy, and now KJ Hamler, they need a little more uh, fresh blood in that room. And number two, can this injury and subsequent surgery put an end to the ridiculous notion of the Broncos trading Jerry Judy? I I mean, it's already stupid to open up one hole when you have a bona fide wide receiver one, but now you're down. You're not number three wide receiver, number four wide receiver. You need all the bodies you can get. The Broncos should be adding there, not subtracting. Well said. And by the way, if they do end up cutting KJ, you're looking at about a million dollars in cap savings. So that's not nothing. Sam Bam, brother, in the house early with the Super Chat. We're excited to have Sam Bam on the show. He is going to make his debut on April 13th. So mark that on your calendars, y'all. Sam Bam, thank you, brother. He says, evening, guys. Sucks about the Hamler news. Do you think this means it's more or less likely they will trade Sutton now? Is it more or less likely they will trade Sutton? Now? And do you think it's time the Broncos move off of Hamler? 2020 draft looking bad other than Jerry Judy. Yeah, in hindsight, Zach, that class is not uh, passing the sniff test. But uh, I can't see how this does anything, this injury, even though it's technically kind of different positions within the wide receiver uh, room, does anything other than improve the odds that – Cortland Sutton stays and as you mentioned Jerry Judy stays but unfortunately Zach it might be time for the Broncos to uh, just part ways with with KJ Hamler wishing the best 
Yeah, I mean, what I was going to say when you're talking about the cap savings, for a million bucks, he's more valuable on the roster than off the roster. And the same thing would go for Cortland Sutton. I'd rather have Sutton than a fourth or fifth round pick, but it's a business and you have to put out the the best starting unit you can. And unfortunately, I don't think KJ Hamler is part of that group anymore. He was already on thin ice, Chad. We were talking about him as a potential trade candidate. There was a report that they were shopping him as well as Sutton and Jerry Judy. This is, to me, the cherry on top and the the final nail in his coffin. I hope he gets healthy for his own good. I really hope his personal and mental health is okay, but the Broncos got to do the best for the Broncos. That doesn't involve him. Oh, man, it really is a bummer. Guys, some quick matters of business. Please don't spam the chat. Whether you're a Bronco fan or an other f- a fan from another team, don't Especially come if you're a bum. And Get out of here. It. That's right. Um, also, guys, connect with us on all the different social medias. My partner here is Zach Kelberman on Twitter, at Kelberman NFL, myself, at Chad and Jensen. And make sure you're following all the applicable MHH accounts, at Mile High Huddle on Twitter, at Mile High Huddle on Instagram, uh, all the Facebook pages, Twitters. Handle that so you don't miss any Breaking Broncos news or analysis as we roll it out in real time. Um, yeah, Scott is currently uh, having to keep out for a, a gnarly Chad troll. So uh, Chad troll, chief troll. I was reading this dude. As I said that Chris, see, you're not blocked. Chris was DMing me earlier thinking he was blocked. You're not blocked, dude. And thank you for the compliment. Bridge the gap album comes out tonight. You guys tonight, 10 PM our time in, in God's time in mountain standard time. Uh, Zach, another interesting uh, topic here. Well, let's well, go. Dylan. I step away for one second and a chiefs fan starts spamming, shake my head. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, we have to deal with them. This is the internet, and people think they're keyboard warriors behind a screen, but we do have the block button, and we will utilize that. So we're all good now. By the way, Drew, you bought the Bridge the Gap LP. Appreciate the support, bro. The kind words on Twitter. It means a lot. Uh, You guys, you should do as Drew does and get one of these albums. Support the cause. If you want to hear it first, by all means comes out tonight so check all your streaming services spotify apple po- or apple music i guess uh but let's get back to broncos marcus lewis henna from across the pond throwing down some big boy stars very generous thank you my friend love you appreciate you he says hey guys love from uk oh boy okay i think he's saying now what uh it is a chance for my washington boy tip him last season go broncos yeah, it is a great opportunity. There's no getting around it for anyone that kind of checks that same box, slot guy, speed guy, Jalen Virgil, Montreal, Washington. And I'm really curious to see, I mean, first of all, I think Virgil has a lot of upside that is yet to be tapped into by a NFL coaching staff. But the same can be said, Zach, for Montreal, Washington, who I think, you know, when he was drafted last year in the fifth round, everyone was kind of like, who, what? Small school guy, came out of nowhere. But still, after what all the new coaches were saying about him, everybody got excited. Everybody got hyped. And he started out solid, Zach, Montreal, Washington last year. And then the foam, the the muffs started happening. It wasn't as chronic, I'll say, uh, as some other punt returners in the days of yore. But it was enough to get on, you know, Broncos country's you know what list. So that was then, though. That was under the uh, the umbrella and the, the on the watch of a incompetent and now utterly fired and gone coaching staff. Speaking of that previous punt returner, Isaiah McKenzie was a free agent for a few days. I thought the Broncos might take a look, but unfortunately, he landed with the Colts. Um, maybe I'm in the minority here, like usual. I think Montreal profiles more in Sean Payton's offense as a gadget player, like a Darren Sproles type more than he is a uh, pure wide receiver. So you name the guy that I think could step up and take the KJ Hamler role because he's more of a full bodied wide receiver. And that's Jalen Virgil. They got really good value on him as a UDFA. I think he can develop, especially in a Sean Payton offense. He has the size, he has the speed. I think he's the next man up if the Broncos don't draft anyone to replace KJ. Um, Zach, you had a report for us. Uh, I think it was yesterday. Denver Broncos holding a pre-draft meeting with a certain quarterback. Doing really well in traffic. A lot of people are reading that still. Even when you've got a $245 million starting quarterback and a backup making, you know, whatever it is, five-something million per year, 
Fans are still interested in who they might be talking to in the quarterback landscape. But who is it and why is it? Well, you're talking about the 2023 Rose Bowl offensive MVP, Chad. He is Sean Clifford, uh, quarterback uh, from Penn State. Sorry, I was trying to find my place. He completed 61.4% of his passes, threw over 10,000 uh, passing yards, 86 touchdowns, 31 interceptions. The unfortunate part is he's 6'2", 217. Nothing really stands out about him. He doesn't have the biggest arm. He's not the biggest quarterback. He's not the fastest quarterback. He profiles, and he's been compared to, interestingly enough, Taysom, Taysom Hill, the New Orleans Saints quarterback, do-it-all kind of player. Maybe Clifford's scheduled to go undrafted or maybe like a seventh-round pick. Maybe Sean Payton has his sights set on another quarterback, but he won't challenge Wilson at all. In fact, Wilson could be throwing to this guy on Sundays. I don't get too caught up in the quarterback size thing. And a big reason for that, as far as height, big reason for that is the waves that were made and the, the trail that was blazed, I think is probably a better way, by guys like Drew Brees and Russell Wilson. Drew Brees, of course, under the tutelage and wing of Sean Payton, and now Russell Wilson's going to get the chance to be under that same wing. So if they brought in, it's not like 6'2 is small, but relative to the size most quarterbacks are coming into the league right now, Perhaps it is a little bit. Uh, Chris, I'm going to do you solid. We're going to get this one for you, big dog. Any Ben Jones news, or are we looking at any more value-free agents, MHH for life? Mm. Buck them. That's right. Guys, get yourself one of these gorgeous hashtag Buck em t-shirts, MHHmerch.com. Easy to remember. What say you, Zach? Um, I've been wanting Ben Jones. I've been wanting Connor McGovern. I, I would even settle for Ryan Kelly, who I believe is still out there as well. But the longer it drags on, the likelier it becomes that the Broncos take a center somewhere in the draft, or they roll with Lloyd Cushenberry and Luke Wattenberg, which I see as a lesser, um, likelier outcome. I don't think they're going to go after Ben Jones. I don't know if it's a money thing or a injury history thing. He had concussion problems last season. Um, he might retire, so it's nothing on that front that we've heard thus far. Yeah, I mean, a fan base can dream, right? But still, the Lloyd Cushenberry, it seems like, for now anyway, they're kind of moving forward in closer to the draft under the understanding that that's probably going to be their, if for no, I mean, if a fail-safe, He's our guy. He started a lot of games in the league. We think maybe Zach Streif, the new O-line coach, former offensive tackle, might be able to make some hay uh, with Lloyd Cushenberry. And like I've said on a few different podcasts, if that is how it ends up shaking out, Zach, I'm not going to I'm not going to jump to too many conclusions just because right now I'm maintaining a healthy. In Sean, we trust kind of uh perspective on things especially on the offensive side of things marcus again brother love you any idea who is going to start at center as i stood uh on i'm worried about the position yeah i mean well as it stands right now zach mentioned the two candidates right lloyd cushionberry 2023rd round pick lsu former national champion and luke wattenberg sixth round pick i want to say zach last year believe, he might have been yeah. a seventh i think he was a sixth and Wattenberg did get his number called a couple of times last season, mostly at left guard. When they tried him at center in the wake of Lloyd Cushenberry's injury, he was so bad that they said, no, let's, let's just kind of shake things up on the O-line. We're going to move Graham Glasgow to center. Uh, and we're going to, when we have to, Wattenberg plays left guard. It wasn't good because Dalton Reisner was a little bit banged up in the final quarter of the season. When Wattenberg, Zach, was on the field, wasn't good. So I can understand why fans still have a healthy dose of um, anxiety and, and misgivings. But overall, hey, look, even if right now you're starting, if the Broncos had to go to war tomorrow, your starting offensive line is Garrett Bowles, Ben Powers, Lloyd Cushenberry, Quinn Miners, and Mike McGlinchey. I mean, that's a tide that probably, probably Zach, can raise Cushenberry's uh, ship if nothing else improves him i just wish the weakest link wasn't the center it, it's such an integral position on that offensive line second most important to me behind left tackle and uh you know the quarterback of the o-line and the way russell wilson plays you want to have that middle kind of solidified the other option that we haven't talked about is moving quinn miners to center 
But I'm of the mind that you leave well enough alone. He's already good at right guard. Why open up another hole? Just sign a freaking center or draft a pure center, and then you'll be set there. Yeah, that is uh, – I'm glad you brought that up. In the interest of being as comprehensive as possible, there is still that chance. But he did so well at right guard. Exactly. It's like, man, just don't don't upset that developmental momentum that he's got in that spot. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy, bro, thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, can't wait for the vinyl, he says. But stoked to finally have some quality big boys on the O-line. Happy to see Alex Singleton get re-signed. Yeah, it was interesting today, Zach. Um, Mike Evans had an article for us at MHH. Two guys who were day one starters last season on notice courtesy of the Broncos off season moves. And one of those being Jonas Griffith as a result of Alex Singleton getting re-signed. But that was really fait accompli because he had already been deposed Zach. I mean, he had been supplanted by Singleton. Yeah. Um, even if his injury hadn't have been significant, Singleton was so good last year that there was no way he was seeing the field again, unless something befell Singleton or Josie Jewell. I don't mind Singleton starting, but I kind of hate that it's Josie Jewell next to him. They're the same player. At least Jonas Griffith is a little better in coverage and a little more dynamic while he's healthy. The problem is uh, Singleton is durable, and Jonas Griffith and Josie Jewell, for that matter, have not been. But I'm still praying, crossing my fingers, that they use a draft pick on a sideline to sideline inside linebacker and really inject some juice into that room. Mike Ronquillo working late tonight, but still keeping – the podcast in his ear like a true dedicated OG. Mike, we want to have you on the show sometime, dude. When can we have you on the show? Think of a Thursday uh, sometime in April or May, just not April 13th. That's Sam Bam book. And let us know. We would love to have you on the show, Big Dog. Nick Hale, thank you for being with us tonight, Big Dog. He says, sounds like Dalton Reisner isn't getting too much love from other teams. Hey, curious topic. This was uh, something we were discussing in the green room before we went live. I'm just glad, says Nick, he won't be with the Broncos. Thoughts? P.S. Bridge the Gap will be in my headphones tonight. Can't wait. Yeah, buddy. Appreciate that. Zach, Dalton Reisner, is it a surprise? Should Broncos fans be surprised that he, to this minute, still languishes on the open market? Hell no. You know, I saw a tweet the other day. It was like, uh, is it surprising that Dalton Reisner is still uh, available, still a free agent? I'm thinking no, and the reason is because he's not good. He hasn't been good since his rookie year. He's regressed every year since then. And they've changed players around him. They've changed coaches and schemes. And he just hasn't cut the mustard. If you put on the tape from last year, you see him get railroaded, Chad. He got trampled over by opposing defensive linemen. Him and Lloyd Cushenberry both. He is at best a backup. That's why when there was market projections of like 10 million bucks annually for Dalton Reisner, I chuckled. It was ridiculous. There's no surprise to me why he's languishing, Chad. And the answer is because he's simply not that great. It makes you wonder what the heck happened to him because he was on a really solid trajectory coming out of his rookie season. You know, I think without Dalton Reisner hitting the roster when he did, maybe you don't get the full developmental turning of the ship around with Garrett Bowles. I mean, even Garrett Bowles credits Dalton Reisner for helping him to reach his potential and get that that payday from the Broncos but after year one it really just kind of went sideways and I don't I don't want to pretend like he was the you know worst left guard in the league but the last season he basically that was the level quality play that he provided the Denver Broncos a couple of iconic moments though for for Dalton Reisner and that's for better or for worse uh hog tossing (laughs) Philip Lindsay across the line of scrimmage in Green Bay so I'll always remember that one. That was a dope play. And then, of course, maybe for worse, the the sideline spat with Brett Rippon. And yeah, he has the balls after how bad he played the entire year to fight the backup quarterback on Christmas in front of a national audience. It's just ridiculous. And adding on to that, Chad, he was the Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee for the Broncos. Uh, maybe a better man off the field than on it. He simply was not good, and I'm happy the Broncos moved on. You have no idea. I mean... It's, it's a kind of a rhetorical statement, but the upgrade going from Dalton Reisner to Ben Powers is so massive. Uh, Jeremy, bridge the gap merch.com, my dog. Go get yourself a hat. Um, okay, let me see where we're at in the chat. We're making good time. We got to keep it a little bit tight tonight, guys. So if you do have any burning topics or questions you want 
uh, us to get to. Get it in the chat. According to uh, Scott, this is about Reisner. Might not be the worst, but Reisner was 42nd ranked guard by PFF relative to their grading system. So he wasn't far uh, from being the worst. He was 53rd in run blocking. That's bad. Yikes. Broncos upgraded in, in a pretty big, bad way, and especially with, with uh, Powers, and especially, Zach, when you consider what's changing schematically, philosophically, with the arrival of Sean Payton. You know, Dalton Reisner might have been a little bit better fit if you were going to be running a lot of zone, a little bit lighter on the feet maybe, between the ears stuff, whatever. But in a phone booth, which is ostensibly kind of the mentality – uh, Peyton is trying to foster here a very physical run game, power oriented scheme, and that's where Powers just fits the bill and eclipses Dalton Reisner by uh, quite a ways. We saw him though in that kind of zone athletic scheme that was last year under Butch Berry, Chad, and he was 42nd overall, whatever Scott said, and 53rd in run blocking. Put it this way: we were Scott, you and I were talking before the podcast tonight, and um, everybody's old friend, Broncos legend Eli Wilkinson former Broncos right tackle who was a turnstile. I mean, God awful. He played guard for the Falcons and Scott said he's actually pretty good. So my point being here, when Eli Wilkinson is a demonstrably better player than you on the field, you're not going to get many offers on the open market. Um, if this tab that I just navigated to would let me come back to Streamyard, that would be really cool. Uh, come on now. I can't see the screen, Zach. If we've got someone on, grab it. Yeah, Michaela Israel jumping in. Thank you so, so much, Michaela. The other Michaela, appreciate you. She asked, do you guys know anything about the running back sign today? Yes, I will have a story uh, coming on the website after the podcast tonight about Tony Jones Jr., the new Broncos running back, former Saint. I think he entered the NFL in 2019, but obviously no Sean Payton. He's a big physical downhill runner, not dissimilar to Javante Williams, Second running back ad they've made, Chad, in the similar mold of a Samaji Pirine. You'll wonder, at this stage, is that a bad sign for Pookie? I mean, it's just hedging, right? You got to hedge against the possibility that – I'll say probability that he doesn't return to the exact same form that he had before he suffered his injury. That doesn't mean he can't still return and play at a high level, but – He's got a he's got a long ways to go, and the Broncos have an offense to run. They can't hinge everything that Sean Payton wants to do in terms of bolstering Russell Wilson and protecting him by establishing a physical identity and rushing attack. They can't hinge that on whether or not Javante comes back. So I don't really read into it too much like that, Zach. That you know the Broncos are are uh, that much more worried about Javante than what they've let on. Uh, publicly but uh obviously they got a hedge they got to put in some a couple of guys so we'll see what it means though for latavius murray and by the way michaela love you appreciate you give our best to the boy rocking some swag in the in the profile pick very cool very cool I think this effectively rules out Latavius Murray coming back to Denver. And I'm surprised by that because I thought it made a lot of sense. But I'm looking at Tony Jones stats for anyone interested he only has 67 career carries for 179 uh, scoreless yards and a handful of receptions. So a lot of tread on the tires and another, like you said, hedge or insurance policy against Pookie being out in extended period. Uh, by the way, shout out Diamond Rattler. Appreciate you picking up the album. You're awesome. I don't know what I do without you guys. You guys are uh, floating the boat, so to speak, for MHH and Bridge the Gap. I mean – hashtag blessed seriously love you guys so much um speaking of love we got the duchess throwing down great to see you michaela parker legendary mythical mount rushmore figure she says kj can't catch a break i feel sorry for him love you guys sorry can't do more mhh forever hey we just want to have you here that's all that's we great. care about so michaela love you appreciate you um but yeah it really is a bummer it's it's unfortunate because we had some high hopes for him we we did, and, we, and I still kind of do because he will he he'll sh he should be back in uh, training camp, Chad. If that um, prognosis holds true, no setbacks. Four months should have him about July or early August. But you wonder. First it was a hamstring, then it was a ACL, then a hip, then a hamstring again last year. Now it's torn pectoral. It's like 
he's being given a sign that maybe the NFL is not in his future and um, just got to go in a different direction. It's really unfortunate. I feel bad for KJ. Yeah, great story and great talent. Just really bad injury luck. Grover jumping in with a very generous super chat. Appreciate that, Grover. Connect with us on uh, Twitter, all right, so we can keep the conversation going and tag you, shout you out after tonight's show for supporting the MHH pod. He says, thoughts on center, free agency, or draft? Much love to you all, MHH for life. Appreciate that, Grover. Um, if the Broncos do bolster that position, Zach, and one thing to keep in mind if you're looking at it from an inside-out perspective as far as trying to put yourself in a headspace that maybe the Broncos are in, they have. it's not like they haven't invested in the position in the last few years, right? The third round pick in Lloyd Cushenberry hasn't quite panned out, but doesn't sound like they're ready to quite throw in the towel. Last year, fifth round pick, by the way, Scott reminding me on uh, Luke Wantenberg. And then you could even argue, although they didn't sign Graham Glasgow to play center, they invested in him and he ended up playing some center for him as a free agent. So which of these, if they do end up bolstering the position, Zach, what's your answer for Grover? I mean, there's pros and cons to both directions. If they draft someone, they'd have them much cheaper. And uh, uh, longevity-wise, it'd be better for the organization that way. You'd have more you know, years with him than signing a 30-something-year-old center. But if I was George Payton, Sean Payne, if I'm running the Broncos, I shelled out how many millions of dollars on the OL in free agency already between Mike McGlinchey and Ben Powers – finish the job and go get a center. There's three, if there weren't any good names out there, Chad, I could really understand tucking away until the draft, but you have Ben Jones out there. You have Connor McGovern who the Broncos drafted by the way out there. And you have Ryan Kelly out there. Go sign him to a one, two year deal. You have over $7 million in cap space. That's enough. You can make do with that. I would just go plug in a veteran there and not rely on a rookie or Lloyd Cushenberry. I would love to see former Missouri Tiger and fifth round pick of this team, Connor McGovern, back in Denver. Same. I mean, day one, set and forget starter. He might not be a pro bowler, might not be a you know all pro caliber guy, but the dude has chops and he's strong. And you want to run the power game? This is a guy that can do that. George, brother, appreciate you. Great to see you in the chat tonight. As you know, we love you. We always appreciate your support. He says, great pod, guys. As uh, as you'll Denver Broncos for life, MHH for life. Yes. Hit the thumbs up, everyone. Very kind reminder, guys. Hit that little thumbs up. Costs you nothing. Helps us out in a big, bad way. Shout uh, out Chris, Chris Hernandez. Those little thumbs right. up. That's right. Uh, Marcus, again, brother, love you. Do you think Sean Payton is trying to put in a no-fly scheme? Zach, so... No, you know, if we're talking about maybe he's talking defense, I got to assume he's he's talking. Oh, Michaela's Cooper in the house. See, the shout outs go a long way. Coop, good to see you, big dog. Um, you got to you got to thank your lucky stars that you have such a cool mom, by the way. So make sure you say your prayers tonight when you do be thankful for that. Um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, no fly zone. Zach, what's your answer for Marcus Lewis? Was it no fly zone though? Is that what he's trying to say? I don't. I, I don't know. know. No fly scheme. Maybe just not. Maybe what he's trying to say is no. No, we're not no going to pass. Are you kidding me? It's we're Sean not throwing Payton. the ball. Yeah, two hundred and forty-five million dollar quarterback and use him to hand off thirty times a game. No, they're going to be much more run oriented. That's obvious. You can tell Sean Payton wants to run the hell out of the football, but you do have Russell Wilson, and he showed last year in glimpses and especially over the final two games that there's plenty of magic left in that right arm especially when he's allowed to make plays on his own and here is the tricky part he has time to set up more than two seconds to throw the ball so they're going to be a much more physical team they're going to probably be a run first team and, and thrive off play action but to say they're going to reduce all passing effectively it's not not feasible not in today's league but no. i think they're going forward sean payton with the old school philosophy that the best way to um, set up a quarterback for success is give him a competent physical running game. And if you look back to the eighties, okay, be before people start casting aspersions on Russ and what the implications of this philosophy Peyton's trying to instill are on Russ, I, I got to remind you back in the eighties when John Elway was chopping wood 
and he was the only bona fide stud on offense. He was winning MVPs. The Broncos were getting to Super Bowls, but were they winning any? No. Then comes Mike Shanahan, 95. 95. Uh, and changes the game, right? Totally restructures how the offensive line is going to work, brings in running backs that can crank out thousand yard seasons like you know they're they're just standing up off the couch Terrell Davis only then did John Elway actually get over the hump and win Super Bowls so this is a sound philosophy Zach and it's rooted I think in uh, in at least in part in Broncos past and Broncos history ironically though the, the better the run game the better russell wilson will look it's been the case his entire career he thrives with a dominant running game and he lives off play action i love the fact that sean payton came in here and identified what the broncos need to do with Russ in order to get the most out of him that's what a good head coach does what a concept ej revis just showing some love to the kings mhh appreciate Thank that brother you, seriously helps us keep these lights on you know this um, but yeah, Russell Wilson, his most prolific seasons in Seattle, beast mode. He had Marshawn Lynch chopping wood for him back there. That was quite a, you know, uh, an asset to fall back on. So I don't think it's any kind of uh, negative implication on Russ. It's that, look, he thought he kind of got a little too full of himself in Seattle, Russell Wilson. And he's thinking, hey, if, if they would just hashtag let Russ cook, I would be getting these MVP votes and we would be going back to the Super Bowl and all that stuff. And then it's a classic case, Zach, of careful what you wish for because he gets traded, orchestrates his way out of Seattle, lands in a city that says, hey, a front office says, here's our young, uh, goofy head coach. He's going to give you anything we're going to give you, anything and everything that you want. We're going to hashtag let Russ cook. Turned out that, it was either he wasn't ready for that, truly, Zach. He thought he was, but he wasn't. Or maybe he was, but the coaching staff around him just wasn't good enough or a combination of the two. I think it's more a combination of the two. Like most things, the truth is somewhere in the middle. Right. But um, So Sean Payton sees this, and then I'm going to serve this back to you. Yeah. And he goes, all right, I see what went wrong last year. I see what, what and how Russell Wilson has succeeded in his past. This is more the direction we're going to – push forward in, in 2023. Beautifully said, and I just want to tack on coaching, coaching, coaching. It really makes the world of difference, but we didn't get to talk about this. What came out yesterday about Russ is that he had a uh, surgery on his knee, a little minor outpatient procedure, not a big deal, but it's been nagging him for a couple years. Discomfort. What he battled through last year, besides the trade, the change of scenery, the criticism, the hate he was getting on Twitter, social media from the national media, I mean, he had a concussion last year. He had a hamstring issue. He had a throwing shoulder issue. He had a knee problem. He had a revolving door offensive line. He lost his wide receiver one, arguably in Tim Patrick. He lost his running back one, and he had Nathaniel Hackett as his head coach. His comeback will be crazy. I can't wait to see it. Uh, as you know, we like to always get at least one Twitch comment per night. Robot of Doom jumping in a regular, a key member of our community here at MHH saying, just want to say prayers to that former Raiders tight end yeah. who found out he yes. has Hodgkin's lymphoma. Raider chief or charger cancer sucks. Yes, it does. Uh, that is absolutely uh, a setback. So we're with you. Here's to hoping he kicks its ass. But, but yeah. Cooper, come on now. But. Yeah, Foster Moreau um, is the tight end, and it's unfortunate that it was discovered, but at least it was discovered. The same Saints doctor who did that physical saved um, John uh, – I forgot his last name. Um, the, I can't remember. It starts with a V, I think, but he had a uh, aneurysm or something that was undetected, and he had a physical – and sure enough that he found it and saved his life. So there's two sides to it. Cancer sucks, and um, it's unfortunate, but at least it was discovered, and hopefully he'll uh, he'll uh, heal up from it. No doubt, no doubt. Um, Robot, good to see you, by the way. We have the swashbuckler himself in the house. Gary Palmer throwing down a very generous super chat, helping us keep you, these Gary. ships afloat here at MHH. 
Love you, big dog. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we would like to have you on the show sometime this off season if you'd be down. Uh, it was great to hang out with you last fall in Denver and and um, at the game and the meet and greet. That was sick. We'd love to do it as a live stream podcast. So let us know, Gary, if that's something you can swing. You don't have to have even a laptop or anything like that. You can just do it from your phone. So I can help you walk you through that. It's easier than you might think. Uh, it's just clicking a link is all you have to do. And then you just set your phone up and talk to us. It's that easy. So uh, if you can swing it, shoot me an email, Gary, milehighhuddle at gmail.com. Zach and I will reply and we'll get it booked because we'd love to have you on the show, my friend. Yeah, thank you, Gary. Great to see you. Um, okay. Whoops, my bad, Scott. Daniel on Facebook, thanks for being with us, my friend, and for the support. He says, thanks for being my orange and blue anchors. That's cool. Sad for KJ. He says, happy for the beefier O-line. Hashtag state of being from Georgia. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's in the same way, Zach, that I forgive Broncos fans who say Bronco, Bronco Nation. Nation yeah. <laughs> when they say state of mind instead of state of being, it's all good. Broncos country is not a geographic location. It is, in fact, a hashtag state of being and even a state of mind. So, Daniel, much love to you, big dog. Better than Elway's old faux pas, Bronco Land, which became a <laughs> meme in and of itself. So uh, it's all good, Daniel. Appreciate you tuning in. And we'll always be those anchors for you. Good for you, bud. Look, I was a kid that had John Elway posters on my wall when I would go out and throw balls in the, you know, with my friends and, and we would make believe. And oh, I was John Elway, dude. I still love John Elway. I got to be a, a rational uh, human being and, and uh, professional and point out some of the ways he went wrong as a, as a front office guy in Denver. But <laughs> I to remind video. everybody, he also did a lot of great things in Denver. So anyway, yeah. I still kind of rue that, you know, we looked at each other and we, we criticized that heavily. The fact of going receiver back to back in 2020, there were offensive linemen on the board. I was thinking about this today. Maybe you wouldn't have to sign Mike McGlinchey if you would have taken a tackle in the second round and not KJ Hamler food for thought. Yeah. And when we expressed our dissatisfaction with wide receiver back to back to open that class, we made it clear that it's not that we uh, didn't like KJ Hamler as a player yeah. or that he wasn't worthy of a second the round. People pick. They passed on for KJ. Yeah. And other needs that, you know, right. needed to be addressed. But, you know, you start talking about needs, Zach, in the draft and you get people, all, you know, all caught up in their, uh, you know, no best player available, all that stuff. But guess what? Teams use the draft to fill needs. They do. Turns out. That's why they draft. Uh, they need players. Um, okay. So we, Zach, are at 37 minutes, guys. We got we to gotta dip out of here pretty soon. So I'm just taking a, a uh, gander at the stream here in the chat to see uh, if there's anything burning that we haven't touched on already topically this evening. Zach, what about news? Have we missed anything else that has happened the last couple of days that we haven't gotten uh, our two cents on? Did we get Riley Dixon? Was that Monday? No, we haven't gotten Riley New Dixon. New punter alert, baby. Yes, you had the article for us. The Broncos yeah. brought back one of their former draft picks. Yeah, this is a big upgrade. I, I wasn't a fan of Corliss Waitman because he was so inconsistent. What I like about Riley Dixon is that he's consistent, and his accuracy is a lot better than Corliss Waitman's, especially in the mile-high altitude. But the Broncos re-signed Dixon to a two-year contract. I think it's like three and a half million it's it's very low money but he will be locked in as the starter presumably because they uh they withdrew the exclusive rights tender from Waitman right after signing Dixon so Dixon's the new punter and I really never thought that trade made sense in the first place he was a member of the all rookie team he was a seventh round pick in 2016 by Denver made the all rookie team and they traded him for a conditional seventh round pick it never made sense to me but I'm happy he came back full circle in the mile high city you know, he's not a world beater, but he's competent and he has experience uh, punting at altitude as a former Bronco. So uh, it's not too hard, I think, Zach, to upgrade over what Corliss Waitman provided you last season as a punter. Zach, I don't know if you got this uh, or saw this. You know, we haven't gotten any free agent 
big free agent press conferences, right? Since free agency, no one's come in. We got to hear from them in an open uh, media kind of scenario or format. But the team site has released a few little side interviews with certain guys that they've signed, including quarterback Jarrett Stidham. And I don't know if you've watched this. It's pretty short. It's, I don't know, two or three minute conversation. You can find it on Denver Broncos YouTube. But this dude coming from the Raiders, I don't know if he was taking some of his um, fashion advice from Derek Carr or his male grooming advice, but this dude's lips were like shiny i've never seen anything like that in my life dude i'm like dude did you did you just go crazy right before they said hey Jarrett, can we get you on camera for a sec and just like go crazy with some lip gloss or some chapstick i don't know but i'm bringing it up not because of that but what he said about coming to denver zach because he did have other offers elsewhere here's what he said quote uh of course it all came down to sean payton quote i have obviously been a huge fan of him and his time in New Orleans. That was probably the main reason he came to Denver. Just getting to play under him, getting to work with him every day. I'm very, very excited about that. That, Zach, then sets the stage for multiple articles I've seen come out across the NFL landscape, much of which we've aggregated at MHH, that fans should not sleep on the significance of the Jarrett Stidham signing for Sean Payton. What say you? I haven't seen the video. Was he wearing mascara? No, no, no. Be... It's like lip gloss uh, or something. It's very okay. weird. Very maybe weird. it's Mark. Maybe... Go I was ahead. Say, maybe it's Maybelline. Bad joke. Bad timing. Mark McDonald <laughs> hopping in. Hey guys, do we know anything about the rumor in reference to Peyton having something in store for Stidham? Uh, my take on it. I don't know why it was blown so much out of proportion. You want your QB two to be kind of nondescript, and that's what Jarrett Stidham is, while also being an upgrade on Brett Rippon. It wasn't an overpay. It was an upgrade at that spot. Um, I want to pivot for a second off of this because I did see an interview with Samaj P. Ryan, and I want to tie it into the Sean Payton thing. He had a chance to go back to Cincinnati. He had offers on the table from other teams. He had more money on the table. He took less money to come to Denver because they – I think they contacted him on the first day of free agency and Sean Payton said, do you know how much I run the ball? Do you know how much I utilize my running backs? And that sold Samaj P. Ryan. So once again, I hate to plug this quote so often, but it's already having an effect. Coaching, coaching, coaching. It was such a massive boon to get Sean Payton in this building. Buck him, baby. Mark, thank you for those stars, my friend. Um, you know, the rumor about what's in store I just think that there's something to just the idea that Sean Payton in part wanted the Broncos job for a reason. All right. And it's not just the pay. There were a lot of teams that were willing to pay him what he was looking for financially. It was the setup. It was the ownership. It was the front office kind of vibe. And it was the quarterback. He had a proven quarterback coming off a down year. Um, but at the same time, that's not a hand picked guy. You know, he didn't scout slash, um, you know, recruit him to Denver. But I, I don't think that doesn't mean that he also doesn't like Russ. We'll see how it shakes out. But the one guy that he did get to handpick, Zach, is Jarrett Stidham. And so make no mistake, if the Broncos have reason, whether it's injury or performance, to turn to Stidham, Peyton's got his guy. I mean, if you watch Peyton in New Orleans, but the beauty of him is he can make chicken salad out of the most foul types of manure. I'm talking Ian Book. I'm talking Teddy Bridgewater, Jameis Winston, Trevor Simeon, former Broncos legend. You're in good hands when you're coached by Sean Payton. So if, God forbid, Russ gets hurt or underperforms and Stidham has to step in, I'm confident that Broncos not only will stay afloat, they will actually win ball games because of the bump in coaching. Peace out, Seth. Appreciate you, big dog. Um, yeah, it's – I think all this – the Stidham scrutiny right now is going to end up being relegated to the Brock Osweiler caliber dustbin of history in that here he comes in. He's a second-round pick, not too far removed, Osweiler, from being a first-round pick, and yet you've got Peyton Manning coming in as a brand new signing for the Broncos, but he's coming off all those neck uh, surgeries and 
You didn't know what the future was going to hold. Halfway through Manning's first year in Denver, no one was thinking about talking about Brock Osweiler. And that's no guarantee, obviously, these situations are different, that that's going to unfold in the same way for Russell Wilson and Jarrett Stidham in year one with Peyton. But I don't know. I have a feeling that's more in line with how this is going to shake out. Brandon, appreciate you, bud. He says, I try to watch as much as possible. Also, thanks to Nick and Scott in the mornings. Yeah, they they do the Lord's work, keeping it real, getting to the news, breaking down the Broncos, everything. Because for people in the morning, because not everybody can make it at night. You know, that's why it's cool for us to have morning programming and evening programming, Zach. Yeah, I appreciate you, Brandon. Um, we like to have a little something for everyone. I want to just say one more thing about the Stidham. Uh, not even controversy, but just the topic and the discourse. If the most pressing thing you can come up with to critique is the fact that they signed Jared Stidham over Gardner Minshew and they gave Jared Stidham a million dollars extra, they overpaid a little bit for him. You had a pretty freaking good, I almost cursed, pretty good offseason there, pretty good free agent haul. So the Broncos are going to be just fine. Don't listen to what the national media has to say and how they rank the Broncos. You saw that, Chad, 30th, according to, uh, I forget who put it out there, but the Broncos are ranked 30th coming out of free agency. Like, how? Why? Who cares? Yeah. It's just how, it's just the result of going from being such a storied franchise that never had more than maybe two years back to back where they weren't a factor going this long, first of all, without being a factor. And then last year being in a scenario, it's like you, you can criticize Draymond Jones in that radio interview, Zach, for saying it didn't feel like with all the drama in Denver last year, it didn't really feel like football was all that important. You can criticize him for airing that dirty laundry, but let's all remember what it was like. Russell Wilson became a national lampoon. Nathaniel Hackett became a national lampoon. How do you avoid uh, some of that association when it's your when it's the team itself? So, in other words, the team's profile right now is low, and I agree with you. It's a ridiculous ranking, but these off-season lists, they're ubiquitous. They're everywhere. They're so ubiquitous that they become also meaningless. I don't care. And if anything, it's like we used to talk about hashtag let them hate. Right. Let them sleep. Let them sleep on the Broncos. That's a better that's a better posture for Sean Payton and Russell Wilson in year one. New t-shirt coming soon. Let them sleep and then buck them on the back. But, you know, you're right. The Broncos are best when they're underdogs. I mean, even look at SB50. They were the biggest underdog in that game, yeah. and they, they rise to the challenge. And I think they're going to come back with a vengeance. Sean Payton has a lot to prove. Obviously, Russell Wilson has a lot to prove. They're going to surprise a lot of folks, and we'll be here saying, told you so. Um, agreed. Even Super Bowl 32, the Broncos were grossly underdogs in that, and they came out on top over the Green Bay Packers and the reigning NFL MVP, Brett Favre. So, um, okay, guys, uh, I think we pretty much got to everything that we needed to get to tonight. We love you. We appreciate you. We're not going to leave quite yet because we do have a few messages for you, but as Zach is getting this queued up, please like the video. Make sure you hit the like button. Yeah, we'll get to that. Uh, follow us on Twitter if you haven't already at the MHH pod. You can also follow the main account on Twitter at Mile High Huddle. Chad at Chad N. Jensen. Myself at Kelberman NFL and Scott at Scout Kennedy. If you guys want some, if you see what Chad's wearing in front of you, if you want a Buckham shirt for yourself, if you want any of our merchandise, go to MHHmerch.com and check out our wide array of inventory. And also Facebook.com slash my high huddle pod. Be sure you're liking that page and following that page. And also if you're on Instagram at mile underscore high underscore huddle, follow us on there. And also Apple podcasts, make sure you're leaving your football priest, a five star review for a chance to win some of that Buckham merch each and every month. But if anything, like Chad said a few seconds ago, please, please, please subscribe, like, and share this video and every video you see on the MHH channel. It really helps us grow and reach more Broncos fans just like you. That it does, baby. Shout out to these great Super Chat superstars and supporters on Facebook and YouTube tonight, starting with Sam Bam, Michaela Israel, Michaela the Duchess Parker, Grover, Gary Leeds Palmer, Marcus Lewis Henna, Mark McDonald, 
PJ Rebus. Much love and respect. We appreciate you guys. And uh, we hope you have a very, very nice weekend. Don't forget, though, tonight, guys, even if it's out of mild curiosity, you got to listen to the new album, my band, Bridge the Gap, dropping tonight, 10 p.m. our time, uh, midnight Eastern. And those of you who do, I love you. I appreciate you. You might like it. But, Zach, this was fun. Um, sorry I got to dip out of here a little bit early tonight, but we'll be back Sunday night. We'll see y'all Sunday night. Hopefully the Broncos will have a center by then. Maybe Ben Jones will put pen to paper. We'll see what happens over the weekend. But have a good weekend, guys. See you Sunday. Take care. And as always, and like the video on your way out, go Broncos.